Hello, how are you doing? I'm Craig Parkinson. You are listening to the Two Shot Podcast. Sit yourself down, pop the kettle on. We're going to have a nice old chat. Who's it with this week? I'm going to tell you right now. <laughs> the devil are you you good you've had a good week fantastic uh thank you so much for joining us and downloading this is the two shot podcast and it's episode 16 with tony pitts now if you don't know the name tony pitts you might know the voice you might know the face uh i first came across tony uh when i saw the second part of the red riding trilogy uh that tony grassoni wrote a few years back, which was fantastic. And I was really enjoying it. And on the screen pops this guy who I'd never seen before. And he kind of stole it for me. He outacted everybody without acting. He, 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 I just felt like he was being, he was right out of that period. Um, and he kind of blew me away. And I've been lucky enough to work with Tony uh, twice and uh, we've become good friends, and I'm thrilled that he uh, said yes to coming on the Two Shot Podcast. This is it. This is episode 16 with Tony Pitts. I really hope you enjoy it. I will be back right at the end. Don't fast forward at the end. Don't cut me off. I've got some important stuff to tell you. I really hope you enjoy the episode, and I shall see you in a bit. We're rolling. This is brilliant. How's your tea, Tone? All right. Well, gr- uh, green. It's all right. It's like green tea. Do you want to turn your phone off? Yeah, I'm going to turn it off now. Because you know we've started. Oh, okay. Well, we won't want my phone going off halfway through. I don't. Stranger things have happened during these podcasts, Tony. Don't, don't worry about it. Well, that would have been a baseline phone going off. He's popping his leaves in his brew, mm. and we're ready to roll. Right. You don't want any opening remarks, do you? No, I do that. I do that. Oh, you do that. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) Um, Tony. Yeah. Pets. How are you? I'm all right. I think. Yeah. You sure? In myself. I'm all right. In myself. In myself. I'm all right. Yeah. Yeah. It's all a bit of a minute to minute, isn't it? Really. You know what I mean? Because we've just come out of. I don't want to get into work too much, but I do want to say that we've just come out of a screening of your film. Yeah. And. Yeah. Do you? How do you feel? See, not seeing yourself. I mean, as well as seeing yourself on there, all the words coming yeah. out of those yeah. mouths because you wrote it. How, yeah. how does that make you feel as opposed okay. to just being an actor? Well, seeing myself is. Um, I never do. In, I've been doing it 30, uh, 36 years, and I don't ever watch anything that I'm in unless I absolutely have to. So, and this year, um, I've absolutely had to because I've got mine and I've done. Um, Journeyman with Paddy Considine's, um so I've had to watch. So that's always horrific. Is it because you just, you know, oh, you don't do. like... I mean, I know loads of people don't watch because they don't like it, but you don't... Some, and I've interviewed some of the younger people, and they do say, oh, well, I do like to watch because I feel like I can learn. Yep. I don't I don't. No, I don't I, I, I'm, I'm always wary of uh, people talking about learning. I don't quite know what that means, really. I understand the concepts of learning. But I think it's uh, creative instincts, and you and I don't think they're learned. You stop watching other people. I don't quite understand how that. Um, uh, yeah, I'm not without intelligence. I understand what people are saying, but I, um, for me, uh, the, my main reason for not wanting to see myself is that uh, I always think it's dreadful. I always think it's dreadful. Um, and you can um, see the cracks. That's all I can see. Yeah, exactly. That's all I can see. Yeah. I don't see anything else other than... And, and I've never... And I know the... Um, what a grown-up does, uh, uh, it's not a complicated lesson, is somebody says... If somebody pays you a compliment, you say, thank you. And I've mastered that briefly in my mid-30s for about a year uh, with, like, a richest smile I'd say thank you. But I always try and talk them out of it, <laughs> really, uh, because I don't... Uh, yeah, um, on recent acting jobs, it's never been more 
apparent to me and prevalent uh, and right in front of the face. Uh, to me, it's the death. The, literally, that I've been in vans full of actors coming back from jobs where they're high-fiving each other, saying, I smashed it. And I think that's... I just... It, that just feels... I don't understand that. I thought that feels like a death to me. I think that it... it you should always be reaching to be authentic. Yeah. That that's that's the um so yeah. So so uh so it's hard uh, watching myself you, you know um not great. Um but as a as a writer is yeah. it is it do you feel do you feel the same awkwardness yeah. watching your words? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Are you, do you still? Do you, are you? Are you very judgy in that respect? Uh, he's never. Uh, it's never good enough because it's, I, I mean, you know, it's not. Um, um, I don't think it's uh, uh, a fully formed thought. But to my it's somewhere inside me is I in my story, my narrative of my my version of me is that if. If I say something and I'm happy in the way I've said it, then I'm not going to speak again. And, and, and making a film is like, feels like, writing a film feels like saying something when you're with people and they say, oh, that's great, say that again. And then you say it. And then people start to say, well, just enjoy that you've said it. And my instincts are to be, oh, I want to say something else. Yeah. So, so, that's, so that's how it is with me. It's all, you know. It doesn't really bear examination. It's fucking exhausting for people <laughs> around me. Is I'm probably best left just to uh, uh, sit quiet. But no, I. Um, but but then I see this in so my, the 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 people that I love in this world uh, this, and the small group will love me back uh, are all made the same way, shaped the same way. Richard uh, Hawley, my dear dear close beautiful friend, Richard wrote, scored the music. Uh, she's, really, she's beautiful. It really, uh, really works. Uh, Heartbreaking, well right? Yeah, heartbreaking. absolutely. So, but Richard's, it's never, it's never going to be right for him. Uh, but it's, but it, isn't that fantastic? That's what we're, I mean, that, as he said, there's a small group of us who are like yeah. that, that we just, no, it's, it's, can't, it's not, it can't be good enough. It can't be good enough. Because then what? Well, then, then what if it, well, then, what if it is good enough? Then what do you do? Then stop. Uh, stop. Yeah. Uh, well, so, so that to me seems, that seems to me it's almost implicit in every creative exchange. But but that doesn't seem to be the orthodoxy. The, the, it feels like, and increasingly, feels like that it's. Um, so I've been doing it for a while, you know, like thirty five years or something. It feels, it feels like um, that it's almost that group thing that we smashed it. We did great, didn't we? That was amazing, and it was. A, and I think to me that it makes me. Want to choke myself? Let's bit. not. Let's not be too self-congratulatory. No, no. Well, no, because that, because then you stop, right? Yeah, exactly. Because then you've been heard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you miss um, back Yorkshire? Do you miss being there? Because you don't live there anymore, do you? Mm, uh, no, no, I don't miss it. I don't. Um, when did you leave? I, uh, we moved to Brighton. About eight years ago, I've moved. On. I mean, I've uh, I've not just been in Yorkshire. I've strayed over the border into Lancashire. I, I, don't I've don't, moved. don't say bad things about Lancashire. No, no. Well, I, well I've, I don't have that in me. I this is this that. is the podcast. This is the I, War of the Roses. I don't podcast. have it. I don't have that. I don't. I don't. <laughs> I've never got. I've never got. Again, I don't get me that. neither with that. Yorkshire. I love well, Yorkshire. What's, what's, I uh, I I lived, uh, it's a generational it's, thing. It's, it's, uh, yeah. Well, it's uh, it's quite it's reductive, isn't it? It's, yeah. It's, it's it's no. I don't. I don't care. Richard wrote a beautiful line that sometimes it's not where you're at, it's where you're from. And I and I think that's um that's still evident. But no, <laughs> I um uh I I've got that thing of I, I move a lot. I suspect that I'm probably running from something that's running inside, but I do move like every four years, five years, we'll uproot and move. Uh, somewhere else, and I always take one last look at the place that I'm leaving, and and then I, I think I, I used to think it was a kind of um, disconnect in me, but I think it's probably a kind of protection, and I think I, I have that with uh, acting jobs, uh, and again I know this is uh, shared by um, 
my friends that uh, so when it's a picture up or when it's uh, uh, at the end of a shoe, the second I've said the last word, it's gone. It's yeah. gone for it's gone for me. Uh, uh, um, yeah, and I think that probably is. Uh, I don't know what it is. I could, you know, you never really know what you think about anything until you get asked. Do you? Do you know no. what I mean? And then you say, and even and then, then, and even then, you don't. Don't really. No, no, you just <laughs> yeah. say the thing that comes into you. Yeah. So I'm not so sure, but uh, yeah, no, I don't miss um, Yorkshire's still there, and um, the Sheffield that I left in in uh, the early eighties. Uh, 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 keep referencing Richard, but it's just it's a good is a good anchor for me because he stayed and I left. And the, the town that I saw, I couldn't wait to get away. I ran out of Sheffield in the early 80s. And Richard stayed. And, and, and I go back there now. And, of course, it's not the... Not, nothing's ever really what you think it is. You know? It's, it's, uh, everything's always more complicated. Can, than, we, can we just talk about growing up sure, in Sheffield? Sure, Um How was it growing up there? Um, For you, personally. Yeah. Um, right, well, I'll start with I don't know, and then, because <laughs> I don't know. I'll, I'll give you... I what can, was, what was, uh, was it just you, or is it... No, I'm, one, I'm the oldest of three boys. I went to, I was the oldest uh, boy of, uh, well, I am the oldest boy of a steel worker, and uh, my mum works in old people's home, and um, I... Do you have a good relationship with your brothers? Uh, with my brothers? Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't have a bad relationship. I, I, I think the truth is I'm... Um, and I felt... I felt all my life, and I think uh, this is one of the themes of, of Funny Car. I've always felt like a cuckoo, really. I've always felt like in the not in the right nest. Right. Necessarily. I don't, I don't mean that... I, I, I could be... I was the... Um, and I built a lot of armour in my early years. I realised that I put, you know, I'm, I'm covered in tattoos. I, 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 you know, did boxing and muscled up and all that. So I, I put lots of armour on as a kid. To, uh, to protect from what? To, well, because I think if I should actually, if I look like how I feel inside, I'd look like Charlotte Bronte. <laughs> and I think that, and I think that I made that mistake as a kid of comparing my insides to people's outsides. Right. I think there was a lot of that going on. Uh, and I also think... Um, do you think that's to do with just... The, it was just within you, or was just, it something with with school? Or? No, no, I think it's how, I'm, I think it's how you're made. I, yeah. don't, I think, I think there... Uh, I've resisted... Um, I've resisted therapy, or, the, you know, the few... I've had calamitous experiences when I've tried to unravel, because I think it is a kind of unravelling. I don't... Um, um, I don't, I don't really know. I'm, and I, 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 I've got sort of, I have big sense memories of being a kid growing up in Sheffield. I remember that I could be funny. I remember that being, uh, and I thought, oh, I quite like that. When you were little, yeah, like making, making little, the adults laugh, like, making the adults laugh. Yeah, yeah making that, and even and and um, I remember making angry adults seeing anger in the face, and then and then they'd have to turn away because I'd made them laugh, and I thought, oh, that's quite. Useful to me because you've you've got into them somewhere. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, yeah. So and then I found, um, and I think in in retrospect, um, uh, I, I, so I went to a comprehensive school, average class size fifty five. Uh, it's a crazy big tumble God, that is a, a tumble dryer of a school, man. Big, even, big, even for, yeah. by nowadays standards, no, that's a bloody it's big crazy, class. Man, it's crazy, but uh, and and I think um, see all these. All these Things are difficult because they sound so self-regarding. But I, well, don't, I, I, don't worry about that. I, I think I was. I think I had emotional intelligence. I think I was quite a smart kid emotionally. I think I understood people's motivations and behaviour weren't necessarily the same thing. Uh, so then I had to find a space to, to operate in. So I was just um, funny. And then if there were family gatherings and if there were. I was always always had a radar for the awkward silence, and I'd f- immediately fill that like builder's foam. <laughs> I'd jump into that and fill the space, uh, and then and then that then that became a kind of self loathing because I'd think, why are you you don't have to, do you know what I mean? And so I'm, so I'd, I'd I'd entertained them, I'd, I'd be, and then I got and I'd be exhausted, you know, sick of hearing me on. 
already judging yourself. Yeah. 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 Did you did you enjoy school or is it just part no, of the course? Uh, I made it in like I think I've repeated this pattern through my life. I made it. Uh, uh, I made it. I made my own reality within it. Again, that sounds. But I did make my own. So I, I, uh, we came to an agreement at the end. They said if I, uh, if you I in the school, yes, me in the school. If I wasn't disruptive and uh, and didn't lead others into. Uh, inappropriate behaviour. I could bring a radio and sit in uh, the cupboard in Val, the secretary's office. Um, that was the accommodation. And w- the, the were you disruptive? Uh, yeah, but not in. Uh... Oh, it's all right. Somebody's... It's okay. It's okay. We've got to... I think we've someone... got to recognise that somebody came to the room that I didn't just just have a complete. <laughs> We'd, someone was just creeping yeah. down the stairs yeah, where yeah, we yeah, are. Yeah, but no, I, I, I was disruptive, but I don't think in. A, I mean, I organ. I remember. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I probably was disruptive. I was disruptive, but I think I'd like to think in a in a there was some art in it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I, I like to think that there was some art in it. I wasn't, I wasn't um, nasty. I, 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 yeah, I remember having a, um, a some pajama. I don't know. I can't. I, don't. I was disruptive, but I think um, it was more. I, 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 I organised uh, bingo. Uh, At school? To, uh, yeah, so I used to, in the lessons, from lesson to lesson, I'd give kids bingo cards uh, and then uh, call the numbers during the lessons. <laughs> and you could do line or house, and then eventually Stephen Elliott shouted house really loud and it all came <laughs> crashing down. And that was more that it's not that I wanted to play bingo. I had no interest in bingo, but I do remember liking the idea of there being another culture within that. So where they thought they were teaching us about uh, Pythagoras' theorem, uh, somebody was actually waiting for twenty-seven for a line. <laughs> I like that. I like that. I, I like that. Right. That's fantastic. Right. Did you have a good set of friends at school? Uh, I'd. Uh, uh, they turned on me. They uh, they sniffed me out. They um, I sort of so uh, I played myself. I played uh, a version of myself. I played that sort of. I think we all we all do that. We do that. Yeah. yeah. Then I think as the years went by, it became apparent to them. Uh, you know, I started turning up in uh, see-through plastic shoes and uh, enjoying uh, Shakespeare and. Um, uh, Laurie Lee and uh, uh, yeah, I think there was a bit of a of a sniffing out went on, and there's book big, but but that's the beginning of uh, what like it seems essentially life is, which is finding your people, right? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. finding your people. It's an interesting thing you say that because um, I was listening to to you, bloody hell, this podcast sponsored by Rich Dolly. Rich Dolly comes up again with you and Rich on yeah. the Radio Four thing, yeah, and. I think it was you that said, you know, we, we, and I'm not quoting, but something like, you know, we spend our life looking for our people yeah. and who are our people. Yeah. And once we find our yeah. people, that's it. That, that, that's it. And yeah, yeah. I, I completely agree with yes. that. My wife always says, yeah, but Craig, you know, they're not your people. Yeah, or yeah. They're not my people. That's so right. I think it's a beautiful phrase. No, that's I, right. I don't hear it said by many people. So when it you said it on yeah. the podcast, it really pinged out because I immediately knew what you meant. And that beautiful thing of, uh, of so I'm 55 in a couple of weeks, that beautiful thing of, because you kind of think, I found them. They're in, you know. You make that mistake in your twenties and your thirties. You think they're your people, but they're not your people. They're no. just visitors. But that's all right. They're just there for that part of the ride. Yeah. But the beautiful thing is, I've found in the last ten years, I've found two or three people that are, you know, out of a clear blue sky. That um, uh, and the sense of it's just that thing of um, I think it's your starting point with people. So, so you're talking rather than explaining. Not, do you know what I mean? So, yeah. so, so we're not explaining or having to feel the weight of each other. You just, and in a way, it can be effortless. Yes, it is, yeah. And I know when I, I found those people because I feel very relaxed in myself. I yeah. don't feel nervous. That's right. And, and you can I don't, be... I don't feel judged. Yes, especially if um, I, I worry that somebody is. is uh, better educated than me right they well what if they're judging me right if, I, if i'm talking to someone and i don't feel i feel oh great well, right right I yeah sure you know it's your constant sure. I, I have that worry within myself but if i feel 
relaxed. Well, it's yeah. I, I mean, a, a painfully, a, a painfully, painfully simple thing, but uh, um, be as you wish to seem. Uh, I remember reading that as a twelve-year-old, and the and the full weight of that uh, keeps on landing. Be as you wish to seem, and 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 to um, and to be able to be you. And because uh, only you know what a terrible person you are, right? You know yeah. all the terrible thoughts you've had, all the terrible deeds you've. Done. Only we, you know, we know we know that. So it, it seems to me that it um, uh, it's about accepting yourself. You know, it's about accepting uh, who you, who you are, and that's uh, and I, I think that depends where you start. You know, I think your starting point dictates a lot about your later. Years, what 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 you see is down for people. What you think's down for you, for your life. See, I didn't gr- I didn't grow up in an environment where there were actors and writers. I didn't see actors or writers or musicians or artists. I didn't see so, them. So when did that come into your life? Ken, obviously- well, Ken Loach uh, picked me. Um, I was a. Uh, the, the, I would contend without any uh, fear of contradiction. I was the world's worst truck mechanic. Uh, uh, in Sheffield, and Ken Loach picked me uh, from obscurity at the age of 19 and gave me a second lead in his film Looks and Smiles. And, um, Which was the, was that the Barry Hines? Barry Hines, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And was, how did he find you? Because he, he, was he coming around? Yeah, came to uh, college, uh, um, came to college and to, you know, so our class of, uh, Sausage-fingered truck mechanics, and I was one of them. And they and said, uh, "Imagine if somebody stole in your motorbike, how would you react?" And then f- there were four or five stumbling attempts. And then when it came, when it was my turn, I just went fucking ballistic. You know, I reacted the way that that you would, that I would. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, the well, the way that boy would have. Yeah. And uh, and then they called me back, and it was still all very unclear. That that was like the. Thursday and then they rang over the weekend and on the Tuesday I uh, left Keddings, sold the wood chisel that I had, that was my only tool that I had and started working on uh, on the film we can launch. Did you think at that point, oh I think this is it, I think this is the journey I need to go on? Because uh, it, hadn't, it hadn't really surfaced consciously had it, before okay, now. Okay and this is where, uh, okay I... I, I maybe it's an age thing. Uh, maybe it's that uh, the confidence, the uh, or the arrogance of youth, or something. I kind of, uh, I, w- I, I wasn't surprised. I wasn't surprised, and I kind of, I was, I, I kind of thought, oh, you're here then. Yeah, stranger. Huh? Yeah, because Str- there was nothing around me to. T- I had an auntie. I had a spooky auntie. Uh, oh, uh, and this isn't any sort of woo woo. It's not that she just. Uh, I remember, uh, uh, you know, saying, "Oh, he's you're, he's going to be writing books, or he's going to be." Oh, you know, it was that. The, so it was it was sort of in the in the uh, ether. It was in the ether. Yeah. It was in the ether. And then when they came, uh, I just remember uh, my shoulders dropping a bit. And uh, and then I over invested in in those people. I thought oh, I thought I um, that I thought that they made sense of me to me. I thought I'm 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 like all of these people. When of course you know you're not like all of any group of people. We're all individuals. But um, but did you feel part of like a clan, some sort of family? I felt uh, yes, I did. Yeah, I did. I did. I felt uh, yeah, uh, yes, I did. I did. I did. And then when that ended, do you, uh, think, the, you, do you think you, you do think when your first job? Well, look, well, we'll see, see each other next week. I did think that. I felt what my, my the my main memory was just terrible grasping, choking anxiety of them leaving. I remember there was a what I now know to be a rap party in a hotel in Sheffield, and uh, and it occurred to me that uh, they were going and. Um, and they weren't taking me with them. It's a circus coming to town, and then they left. And I, I remember thinking, and I, do, I wrote to Ken, uh, saying I don't want to go back to 
Um, I don't want to go back to where you found me. Uh, so that was my thing. But I also did think that, yeah, it did take me a little while to realise that um, it's just a job. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a job. And you're not going to see everybody uh, every week for the rest of your life after you finish it. So yeah. did you feel quite lost after that? Cause... Yeah, I, well, yeah, well, I felt cast adrift. I felt sort of... Uh, but you know what? I, um, I did this thing... That I used to do a lot when I was young. Just I I taught my I taught my own future. Lying is another word for it. So I remember saying, "Oh, I'm going to be." Uh, people saying, "What are you going to do now?" And I remember saying, oh, "I'm going to be on Coronation Street, or I'm going to do an Emmerdale Farm, or what." I just like you know, I just I said, and then and then those things happened. But was that out of? Did that come? out of embarrassment because people would know that you've done this film and you wanted to, to ca- tell them and carry on that you were being successful? Later on, it would have been embarrassment and, uh, and status. Th- then uh, it was... Um, yeah, I, I completely understand that. I think later on when you come out of a job and... you know, Because I, I, I was in Emmerdale for 11 years. When I left that... I How long was that after the Ken Loach film? Oh, I got um, I got off of Coronation Street in Emmerdale. I did a, a theatre tour of uh, uh, Trevor Griffiths' Oi for England, and then I got off of the street in Emmerdale at the, the same time, so I went pretty much straight on. And then I left Emmerdale. I was sort of jumping ahead, but when I left Emmerdale, I didn't couldn't get arrested for about... A year, I don't know, it might have been a couple of years. And then it was that, you know, what you're doing... I never, I couldn't crumble and um, and do a a regular job because I felt like it's a bit of a house of cards. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You've got to kind of live the, um, got to pay your dues, I think. Yeah. Uh, you've got to pay your dues a bit. And uh, um, how, how did you feel at that time when you you couldn't get arrested? When and, and you know that you can't go and do, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. quote unquote, a normal job. Yeah. Uh, well, I uh, smoked about two tons of weed. I played my guitar five hours a day, and I wrote for five hours a day. So the writing was already in that, you at that the point. writing. That's where. Uh, um, so what? What? what would have been regarded as downtime and to be uptime because that's where I just wrote. I've uh, Not very good when it's a podcast because you can't see the available space, but the space that we're sitting in now, half yeah. of it I would have filled with my writing. I wrote films and books and plays and poetry and... Just anything. Every, just every, just to be, anything and everything to be creative. Just, just to, because, yeah, because uh, I because I had no choice, and I learned about myself there. I learned about uh, who I am Isn't during it f- that time. Funny that sometimes when you, we've got no choice, or we're, we're backed into a corner, and we, we well, what do you do? Do you slide down the wall? Do you come yeah. back and you go right? Well, I've got to do it. You've made me yeah. do this now, yeah, so yeah. I've got to. I have no strength. I have no sense of nobility. I've never. People have said to me who knew me through that time, and then have known me and known me through uh, subsequently through the good years. I've said, "Oh, you deserve it," and uh, you know, you you always knew you. But there was there's no sense of noble struggle. I literally. I haven't had a choice. I, I I didn't have a choice. I couldn't. Um, it wasn't. You know, it wasn't. I'll show you. I, that wasn't. I didn't wake up thinking I'll show you. I just. If I didn't. If I didn't get the stuff out that was running inside me. Yeah. Uh, not good. You know, not good. I'd I'd um, still suffer from insomnia now. But uh, yeah, I've, I've you know uh, it's. Uh, um, yeah, it'd be a complete collapse. I have to... Release. Yeah, I've got to. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And did you feel, just jumping back to working on the Ken Loach film, because you never... Had you done any sort of like drama clubs or anything like that prior to As that? a punishment at Myers Grove, <laughs> as they, uh, one, of the, one of the punishments they gave me, there were t- two, two in both similar stories, but one was at Myers Grove uh, be, uh, being disruptive again, and the punishment for that was to go on stage and to do a stage death uh, in front of the school. I can't remember the details of it, but I had to die on stage with a sword, and I remember taking about, you know, 
I milked it for about three minutes until I actually <laughs> laid on the stage. And uh, so that that was a punishment because the, 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 and the implicit in that was the idea was you're being punished by it. Now, we're going to punish you by giving you lots of attention. Giving you some airtime. Giving you some airtime. Wow. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Punishments at that because, school. Because, because it's uh, poppy syndrome, right? It's yeah. like, don't, you know, make a fool of don't. So that, and then equally, when I was a truck mechanic, I mean, that was, we won't go into that because that's probably, we're probably getting into libel, but I was, I mean, I was, that was physical violence that I, I fought there for because they were, I, you know, I was fighting with them. They were hitting me and holding me down and strapping me and trying to make me, uh, uh, you know, comply. And, uh, and one of the punishments they give that every Christmas they got the apprentices to stand on the back of a lorry and sing a Christmas song. And so, uh, so the place would be full of blushing apprentices, terrified. Sh- I got a pink tutu thing that I got from uh, Erie's Road in Sheffield and wore that. And I sang, I was on the back of the lorry for, you know, 45 minutes. You couldn't get me off. <laughs> um, so, yeah, sorry, I've got, uh, as I often do, I've lost a thing. No, well, no, anyway, no. that's what I did. That's but what. did you feel that you were. Did you feel you were learning on the Ken Loach film? Oh, and you were, cause you, no. No, not at all? No, but I've, I, and I've heard other people say this because I don't... Um, I, it's probably... I don't know if it's even worth examining. I don't... Because um, t- to me, uh, um, it's all... It's instinct. And the only t- time I've got in trouble creatively or in my life is when I've not followed my instincts. So I don't yeah. mean my instincts are right... No. Don't mean that I'm going to, you know, uh, and I'm sure, and I've read quite subsequently, I've read a lot about this. There's a great book um, about thin slicing, about the, uh, the, 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 yeah, it's the moment of, the thing that excites me, the thing that I live for is the, is the spark of invention. So the, the, the minute you, they say action and you, you do that, so I, I, I don't have the capacity. Maybe it's a, a failing. I don't have the capacity to uh, to learn because then I think I'd start wandering towards mimicry, and then it'd feel inauthentic. Then I'd start being more self conscious, and it's uh, and then it'd all yeah. fall in. So, uh, well, that really is the house of cards, isn't it? Because if, that it's, is not, the if, house if of it's not steeped in reality, yeah, then, then it ceases to become truthful. Uh, and, and we've worked together. My, the other thing that is, I uh, will always. Um, you know, I try and do something different on each take, even yeah. if it's tiny. Just you know, I, th- that idea of, of. But I think sometimes you have to do that for yourself. You have to do that for yourself. Yeah, yeah. No, I th- absolutely. I think you'd otherwise. Uh, uh, yeah, I couldn't. Yeah, then it becomes a different thing, right? Yeah. If you have to, yeah, and and yet yeah, I've always always had problems with that um, the continuity thing. You know, the spoon was in your right hand when you said that and then you scratched your left cheek, I've always found that puts me in a tailspin. It's part of the job, right? Yeah, I've yeah, yeah, that, but... And then you've got to learn it, but it's still, that still puts me... So learning, I don't know. And there's and there's a lot of learning that I see uh, younger actors do that I kind of, I'm a little bit suspicious of because the, the technical learning, the the talking about this, what size frame is it? Where's this? Where's that? It's not your business. Not my business, man. No. I does not to me. Not it's not your business. Well, it's and because you're... you've got twenty people on that set, and they've all got their specific job to yeah, do. So you don't do the see the continuity yeah. guy or lady yeah. pop up to the gaffer and go, sure. What, do, sure. do your job. Sure, do your. So that's a massive thing, and that was a big thing. I know we're not talking about specifics, but in Funny Cow. That, that was so. Uh, so it's just it's friends. In yeah. Funny cow. We're made by friends, and everybody was treated as a grown up, and everybody was allowed to do their job. Not uh, and I do, I do. I think again an increasing trend with, where younger actors are, and I think and and usually the more fuss they're making about other people's job, the less interesting they are doing their job. Yeah, you know. It's a little bit like when somebody forgets their lines. And do we have to have that banging? Or do, yeah, can you yeah, not do it? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, well, yeah, actually, yeah. it's not about them yeah, doing yeah, that. It's yeah. about that you yeah. actually don't know what you're you talking about. You don't know about. what you're talking about. Yeah, I see, I do, do I found myself, this is, that's interesting, because I had a little wince, because I found myself in the last couple of jobs doing the, do we have to have that banging? And that's not, and it's not because I forgot my lines. It's not because I forgot my lines. 
uh, it is a, uh, it, and it's terrible. You have to watch yourself on set. You have to watch yourself doing the policing of other people. You know, because some people just like to, uh, some people just like to fuck about. Yeah, but, but that's all right because that's their way of doing things, right? So, yeah. and, that, and that's that's cool. You have to be. I've found myself. I've worked on a couple of noisy sets recently. You know, where people play, and I kind of find myself. You have to be careful, you know. I just, I just. Uh, but there I, needs to be some sort of focus. Yeah, there does, and for I, everybody. And you've got to, and you've got to. Uh, it seems to me. Well, it, well, it seems to me definitely that you have to have something to care about, and this is the thing that I care about. This is the thing that we do. Is the yeah. thing that I care about. Yeah, uh, and uh, and I do care about it. Do you think, I, do you, is it. Sorry to interrupt. Do you think there's a need for you to do it? Is it? Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. And I think a lot of that is uh, uh, to do with uh, upbringing. I think that I, the template of masculinity I grew up with was men def- work with their hands and did it, and, I, and we can't all be worker bees, and I, I'm, I wasn't a worker bee. So but, so, but if I'm doing my job, I've got to do my job. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? There's so you, been, that work ethic's I've there. I've got to do, I've got to do my job. I can't, uh, um, which kind of contradicts what I said earlier about it being instincts and stuff, but I just mean... Um, no, but I think you can be instinctive, but still have that Yeah. That focus and that, yeah. that work ethic. Yeah, I yeah, I'm here to do the... I, I think, I'm, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, I think what you were saying was about learning, you're not talking about the technicalities, you're going with the gut. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. That I, 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 I dread. I, I, you know, one of my it's, it's quite a lot of dread in my landscape. But one of my one of uh, a trauma. But one of one of my dreads is walking away and people. The idea of people saying, "Well, he didn't. He wasn't so bothered." Do you know what I mean? That that's your worry. Well, I don't. I'd, I'd hate the idea of, of, of people saying, "Well, he, you know, he didn't um, care. He didn't care." Yeah. That's, I'd, uh, yeah, that would fill me with... Would that uh, upset you? Yeah? yeah, yeah, it would, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because, because, uh, um, because I think, and the, uh, this is real, but anyway, it's what I believe, so I'll say, I think that, uh, and I'll use these words, and these words are heavy words to use for for the streets I come from, but I believe in art, and I, I believe that, uh, uh, and I believe that that's, what we fight wars for is to, and I, that sounds, I know what that sounds like, but the, the, the music is the most powerful form of communication. I know, I don't know anything that touches music. Music's a kind of magic to me. Yeah. It blows my, it blows me to pieces. It tears me to pieces. Of course. And I know you've got that. I know you've got <clears> that too. I can hear something and it will smash me. It'll be a, it's a cricket bat in my teeth. And then, and I've loved poetry from being a child. Tennyson and Auden and Larkin. As a as, as a boy, I loved them, and the the that the best way of saying things. And then, and then, but you, you have to have the same approach to that as you. All culture, high culture, low culture, that all the because it's all ways of trying to make sense of all this. The fucking drunkenness of being alive, right? Yeah. So it's all that's what it is. So, um, and it's kind of everywhere. I mean, I think, you know, I'm not being all wanky or anything, but it's arts everywhere. Yeah. Like I was, I was thinking about you this morning, actually, I was walking over Waterloo Bridge and I I had some headphones on and it was very, it was very jarring music compared to everybody on the commute. Yes. And everybody's rushing and their heads down and they've got the trainers on with the suits, the normal, normal. Yeah. And I'm kind of walking at my pace and coming towards me. And in my own sort of filmic, romantic head, yeah. there was a woman, and she was reading a book as she was walking. Beautiful. And she was obviously really yeah, enjoying in, in, this in book. Another... And all of a sudden, I'm going, this is like a beautiful scene from a yes. film. All these other people are rushing. And she, they're, she's in Technicolor, and they're all in black and white. Does that make That's, sense? It, it, it makes more sense than anything that anybody's going to say to me today or perhaps in the next week. And I and, and I got to the point where I was sick of apologising for being made that way. I'm not... I don't, I don't, if people think it's wonky, I don't care. I really don't no, care. No, should you? Yeah. I've always put, I've put, I've, uh, uh, as a child I did it. I said, I do it now, I, 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 I'm, I'm, 
I'm always, there's always a part of me observing whatever it is. I've got a thousand stories where I'm in the middle of something and I'm thinking, I can hear the music on this. Yeah. I can hear the music in this and I can see that look, that little look and smile there and that little, I can see that and I, and by, that's what I, I process everything. I've lost people, I've lost people to suicide. I've, I've had, like everybody alive, we've had, I've had terrible, terrible things happen to people in me in my life you know f- family loved ones friends uh, 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 my first instinct is always to process it into you know I write a play about it or I write a poem about it, or I write a um, yeah so that's the way I'm made and that makes absolute sense to me and because uh, I know uh, you said that that you 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 the learning thing, what you said before, mm. but in a way, because we are we we observe and we we see that yeah. that wink or we see that yeah. that smirk or that yeah. smile, subconsciously I think that's 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 a learning. Oh, uh, yeah, I th- yeah, it is. Uh, okay, I think. Uh, uh, yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not being as articulate no, no, as I no, want no, to no, be. No, no, I know exactly what you mean. But I think I think I, I think like all words, learning has many meanings. I mean, sure, a, a learning uh, in the. I think there's. The, I think there's. Uh, an instinctual understanding of uh, of the emotional language and the weight in people's words. And as a small child, I remember knowing very, very young that what people were saying wasn't necessarily what they were thinking. Yeah. And I also remember people talking a lot about things that had no importance because they, it, they, what they were actually saying is, oh, can you fucking hell, I can't believe I'm alive, can you? I remember thinking that, as a young kid, uh, again, so I, I think it's, you know, I meet people all the time who talk about art very, very freely because they don't have the baggies that goes with it, you know, they, yeah. don't have the, they don't have the, they don't feel the need to uh, um, explain uh, themselves. Uh, but yeah, you know, it's a journey to, it's a journey to, and quite liberating to be able to say that's, uh, that's who I am, you know. We were talking not so long ago, I can't remember who it was, about caring. And sometimes I've been accused of caring too much. Yeah. And also, but I was, I forget who it was. Do you know who it was, Griff? What episode it was? He's he's, he's shaking his head, he doesn't know. But we were talking about some people who do what we do, they don't care. Yeah, yeah. And they should care a bit more. And and it's not being, it's not somebody specific or any, it's just certain people who, who you cross paths with and you go, do you not care a little bit more? Because uh, motivation, right? It's, it's people's. It's why? What's people's motivation? A lot of the motivation for what we do is ego, and then there's vanity. Uh, the vanity, and there's also there's that tension in all of us. Uh, talking acting wise, is there's a neediness there. There's a neediness, and then there's, then you despise that neediness in yourself. I've only just realised why I can't I hate my terrier Ernie. I've got two dogs. One of them's called Ernie, and I hate him because he sits looking at me all day waiting for a pat and it reminds me of of my neediness because i think that that's that's one of the strands of what you do i mean i think to um uh, uh so i so I, I i do think um yeah i do think people should care and i also don't think we should worry so much about you know, we live in a world now where we say, don't judge, don't judge, don't judge. Well, I mean, you know, sometimes if pe- people are there doing the job, f- uh, um, I see wrong and right, it's big words, but sometimes I think people are there for the wrong reasons. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I do know what you We're, mean. They're not there to tell stories or to make contact with uh, other people or to have resonance with people. Um, well, they're there for very different reasons. Yeah. Yeah. Um, tell me about your gymnasium. About my gymnasium? Yeah. But I no longer how did, own. How did that come about? What, the boxing gym? Yeah, can we talk about it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, I, don't, I don't have it anymore. How, it did, was, how did you get into it? Where did uh, that come? Because this I'll, came... I've always had that. I've always had... I, I tell you exactly what the genesis of that that was. Uh, well, it was twofold. One, uh, if you if you wanted to like tennis and... and, 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 and Orden and whoever, like, you had to do a bit of weight training. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I had to do a bit, uh, uh, and I, uh, and I come from a, I come from a, a time and a place where men, you, 
use their bodies physically. Yeah, and a solid working class solid, background. Solid yeah. working class background where men went out and grafted. And, I, and so uh, somewhere inside me, I got that thing, oh, I need to do a bit. So I've trained all my life. I've, I've boxed and uh, and done weights, and a bit of... So, and it ended up, uh, I had a place called Tony's Ring when I lived up in Hebden, uh, which... Um, it became apparent quite quickly it was actually a kind of therapy. So I had um, people coming there. I'm a great believer in um, using the body for what it's evolved to do, and I think it's a source of a lot of uh, mental uh, uh, anxiety in people is that they don't use. When we were, you know, there's conjecture over it, but let's say, for argument's sake, 200,000 years old as a species, and up until, you know, very, very recently, we were having to chase meat and pull it down and eat it catch it and kill it and eat it yeah. and, and and now uh, uh thankfully you know we've got uh we've got audis and and chairs <laughs> so which is good but um i think you need to uh, and i i've definitely known myself that if if i work hard in the gym and i let it that go through my body it helps me across the board so i started um Boxing classes, teaching in village halls, and then you know, did it, 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 and then it ended up. I got my own boxing gym, and had some, I don't know, hundred, hundred and odd members. And um, did you enjoy that? Or was yeah, it a very, I enjoy. I, th- I enjoyed a couple of aspects. I enjoyed the. Um, I like to see people uh, um, free themselves. A little bit, yeah. You know, I think that's. I found that immensely rewarding to see. And um, society, t- I had a lot of women members. So I found that really powerful as well. That a lot of you know women, uh, you know, are told to, we're all told to be a certain way in different ways. But just to let your hands go and to just use your body. So I enjoyed, yeah, I enjoyed that. Uh, and also, it was a sense of um, community. Uh, yeah, sense of community, right? Sense of community and common endeavour. And uh, and uh, that everybody was there, were do, doing the best, and nobody was. Uh, and the the discipline. I was, I was talking about this somebody the other day. The, the discipline there was peer discipline. So so people would always do. They'd always do the last twenty press ups because everybody else was, which is usually goes against everything that I'm like because I'm I, I believe in the individual, not you know, but but. but there's something about that I'm going to... Because you've done it, I'm going to do it. And that's... Watching that in a group is uh, very life-affirming. Different form of peer pressure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Do you think... Because you know we spoke about the need for creativity before. Do you think the need uh, for training and f- uh, physicality helps you personally, mentally? Because I know when oh. I when I train, it really... There's, helps me upstairs. There's no, there's no, uh, there's, it's not, uh, it's, uh, yeah, I've got 35 years of evidence. I, uh, I, I, I can't, can't not. No, can't not. I yeah. can't not. I can't not. I've got, to, I've got to let, uh, no, I can't not because otherwise it's, I'm, uh, I stop. I, I think the most time I've had off out of the gym in, in 30 years would probably be two weeks and, uh, then it's antidepressants and and that. So no, I, I absolutely believe in that. I mean, it's, you know, I've, would it be that serious if you didn't train that you would have to oh, take? Oh, something? I'm, I'm, I, 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 I'm, and I'm quite happy to. Everybody I know and love self has self medicated all their lives. I mean, and it's all those things are always hiding places that, that turn into prisons. Yeah. So and it's always been one or you know. A, I drank, and all, when I drank, I drank, and I, I still drink now. I've not, I've not stopped. You know, I, I smoked, I smoked. I, t- uh, I, I, I take sleepers. I need to take sleepers. I occasionally need to take uh, diazes to take the edge off. Uh, As insomnia. Oh, sorry, I know we spoke, need, we touched on it before. You know, Has yeah. that always been in your life? No. Uh, do you know what that started when I wrote a sitcom for the BBC? It, because it was such a a worry, a turbulent, <laughs> unhappy experience. It felt like I was delivering legal papers. Uh, but no, it's been there. It's been the the um, yeah, uh, and um, so I use the physical culture to drain it. But uh, but then sometimes it's like I had a German Shepherd, and I used to uh, that I trained up, 
and 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 I had to give him to the police in the end because what I did was I just got him really fit, so fit that he couldn't sit down. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah not just hinge, just that sort of. So yeah, I believe in. Um, uh, I absolutely uh, believe, and it's, you know, it's an old. It's, it's not a. It's not headline news, is it? The Greeks and the Romans knew it, and. Uh, lots of cultures have known it that I think uh, I don't think of of having a mind and a body. I think I am, I am yeah. the body. I am the body. Yeah. I am the mind. It's not, um, yeah, absolutely. I know, and, 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 and yeah, and I, again, I don't feel any. I've I've always needed something to uh, take the edge off a little bit, and and that's, and it, then it's easier for people. Around me. Do you work? Do you work? Are you a big worrier about even? You know, some people worry, and I'm sure my mum won't mind me saying this. No. She probably won't even listen. Sure. But my mum would worry about the tiniest little things prior to them happening. They, like they might not ever happen. Sure. But she would worry. Sure. And it'll Rattle eat it. her. Yeah. Eat her. Okay. Up. I tell you. Okay. I have a very specific one. So, so my mind is uh, on data roaming all the time, and I'm very careful not to let it connect to Wi-Fi because then I scorch myself. So I've got, uh, it's all, I have a lot of, I'm writing a radio drama now, I'm writing my next film uh, coming up. So, I, I, and I'm aware, of, so I've always done this. So I've always got my head full of music and, and writing and idea and things that I'm going to work on. That stops the focus. And my thing is uh, health anxiety. So I latch on to something, and it's happened through my life. I've had every major life-threatening illness you can think of. I've had none of them, but that's what happens with me. Yeah. So, I, so I, and once I have, if I have a thought, once I've had the thought, there's no amount of, you know, I've been taken. To, <laughs> it's just snowballs. <laughs> it's uh, absolutely. It's not even. It's uh, what's uh, what would be. It's a, it's a tsunami, is what it is. <laughs> it's a tsunami, and I've been taken to specialists, and I've had scans, and there's a part of me knows, and they're, and, and they're saying, it's fine, we've checked the thing, and you're fine, there's nothing. I'm like, right, thank you very much. And then by the time I'm back out in the car, I say, well, they don't. They sometimes miss things, don't they? <laughs> so, yeah, 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 yeah. So that's my worry. I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a warrior in that sort of... I don't, I don't do that, you know, uh, projecting the, oh, they might not like me. That, yeah, that yeah, like, yeah. I don't do that so much. I'd, uh, I'd, um, uh, yeah, I think the thing I touched on earlier, I'd, uh, that, uh, I'd, I'd be concerned that people uh, uh, thought me inauthentic. Yeah. I'd, that, that'd be a concern. The rest of it is just, you know, what kind of sordid end. Because I know people probably listen to this will just they'll be listening and they'll go, well, he sounds like the type of bloke that if he's going to do something, he does it 100% yeah. or he doesn't do it at all. Yes. No, no, no. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Uh, 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 yes. And it can be draining. Oh, it is. It's absolutely, it's, it's yeah. I, I, see, that's part of it. That's the big part of it is what's how draining it is for people around me. That's the real draining part. I can see and I want to help them out. I want to... I think I told you this story when I, 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 no, I know I told you this story of meeting. I met, I was out on a walk and I met a therapist and um, just walking the dogs. And at the end of the walk, he said, you've got more trauma in you than anybody I've met in 20 years. And I literally ran back to the house uh, uh, and rang my agent to tell them because I thought it was a real badge of honour. I thought, what a what a fantastic! I said, and he's been doing it twenty odd years. <laughs> what did your agent what, what, say? Uh, there's, there's been no calls, but, <laughs> you know that. So yeah, it's a little bit, a little bit exhausting for for for, for all involved. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's uh, it's never exhausting for me, and I'm uh, chuffed you, my friend, and I'm really uh, really chuffed that you've come on, uh, and and I'm chuffed you're one of my people. Ch- thanks, Tony. Cheers, brother. Thank you. And there we have it. That was it. I mean, I love, I mean, I really love sitting down with Tony anyway, but I especially loved sitting down with him and recording this episode. Uh, he's a lovely human being and I'm really, really chuffed to bits he came on. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, 
And that was it. That was episode 16. Next week is episode 17. Of course, Craig, we can all count. Uh, you know we've got the Patreon site. If you want to bung us a few quid, that's totally up to you. The podcast will still be free, but you know what it does. I'm not going to blather on about it. Uh, if you want to drop us an email, that would be great. We'd love to know your thoughts on the podcast. We are twoshotpod at gmail.com. And if you want to join us on Twitter... You're always welcome. It's at Two Shot Pod. Same Instagram, same Facebook. Let us know how you're getting on with it. The responses we've had have been fantastic. We're thrilled. We really love hearing from you. So keep that coming in. Now, you know that we don't have a sponsor for the podcast. Myself and producer Griff, we do this out of our own back pocket. But I need to give a massive special shout out to Tanya Wade at Maison Bateau, the beautiful patisserie on Greek Street in London. This week we were in London, a venue we were supposed to record at fell through at the very last minute, and she came to our rescue and said, pop yourself downstairs, get your mic set up, no one's going to bother you. So she's been absolutely fantastic. So if you're ever passing Maison Bateau, pop yourself in, grab a coffee, beautiful pastries, great croissants in the morning, get yourself in, say hello to Tanya, and give her a big two shot pod thumbs up that is it i shall see you next week for now i've been craig parkinson he's been producer griff this has been the two shot podcast thanks so much for downloading really appreciate it take it easy the two shot podcast is presented by me craig parkinson recorded and produced by thomas griffin for splicing block our music our brilliant music is courtesy of then thickens Cheers.